So um, I just want to show you a couple of the like cool things that you can do in Zoom that I think people underestimate their kind of like um, dynamicism or like the way in which they can make a workshop more interesting. So <laughs> here is my empty Zoom room. So sad. Empty Zoom. Okay, so let's get it so that we can see it here. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, did that work? Oh, yeah, that works even better. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our Zoom and a couple of features that I'm going to just like highlight for folks. So one is um, we all use the chat probably uh, quite often as, um, as facilitators. I think the chat is one of those features that when we go back to in-person, we will actually really miss um, the ability for people to just like at, not just have to talk, but still be able to publicly share all the time in the chat. Um, so having people use the chat in different ways, I think is a really interesting thing to do. So couple of ways that I use it, there's the just like respond, throw questions, comments, concerns, like uh, things that you want to like, you know, put out there to the group, throw those in the chat. That's the simplest way. That's the way I see everybody using it. Um, another way to like, just make it a little bit more dynamic is asking people to write a response, but not hit send until you say so. So like just the idea of, okay, I'm going to ask you to, I do this all the time with, um, with one of the facilitator cards. So opposite thinking, um, opposite thinking, here we go. Opposite thinking is just this idea of like, instead of saying what makes a great facilitator ask, or what makes a great leader ask, what makes a terrible leader? If you wanted to be a terrible leader, um, give me one way you could do that. And rather than just having people throw all of those ideas in the chat simultaneously, what I'll have them do is, okay, I want you to think of one way that you could be a truly terrible leader. I want you to type that into the chat, but not hit send. And then I'll give everybody, you know, 10, 15 seconds and then three, two, one hit send. And they all come in. I call it a chat storm. Some people call it a chatter fall. And, um, they all come in at once. And the reason I like that is it avoids groupthink. And I think it lowers the bar of participation just a little bit. It makes it a little bit safer because you don't know what everybody else is going to say. So it doesn't feel as like, you don't feel quite as self-conscious about what you are sharing. And then you have this list that you can do things with. So just that idea of like the chat in Zoom can actually be used a number of different ways. Um, you can have people put things in there constantly. You can have them do it all at once. You can have them direct message each other, um, like on purpose rather than just have them do it. Um, because they're like, Oh, I saw it. It's so good to see you. Like that kind of thing. Um, you can actually use that as like a, a function or a way in your zoom, um, uh, to like bring in some different types of involvement. So chat is a really powerful feature. Um, and I don't think we should underestimate it. Um, the other thing that I think is really powerful, and again, this is the thing that won't seem to screen share effectively, is this tool called a whiteboard. Um, so let me see if it will show up here. Yeah, cool. So um, we're probably all used to going up to screen share and then finding the thing we want to share and then hitting, hitting, you know, let's start, let's do that. Um, let's start that share. Um, it's worth exploring the advanced tab. Um, and, uh, but also this idea of this whiteboard. So the whiteboard in zoom, oh, it is letting me show it. Perfect. So the whiteboard in zoom is this like really undervalued tool. Um, okay. I'm trying to get it so that it's like full size without being bigger. Boop, do perfect. Okay. So a couple of ways you can use this whiteboard in um, in zoom. So you can actually do like a hacky version of some of the stuff that I showed you in mural. So let's draw a line. And then again, we can put strongly agree. Oh, I'm not going to be, Oh, well, let's see if I can move it afterward. Yep. There we go. Strongly agree. Don't try to style it too much, Meg. Okay. Strongly agree. And strongly disagree. Okay. So now we've got our spectrum again. And when you are, um, when you are screen sharing or sorry, when you are screen sharing a whiteboard, um, and when you're screen sharing anything in zoom, you can have people annotate it. So it won't look like this on their screen. Um, 
or it won't look like this on their screen. Um, and instead it will say um, Meg Bolger or whoever it is, is sharing their screen. And then right next to that will be a button that says view options. And when they press that view options button, one of them will say annotation. And when they click that, as long as you have it enabled, um, which you just need to do right here. So in that more tab, there's disable and then enable an annotation for others. As soon as you click that, they'll have the option to annotate and they'll get this toolbar. Um, they'll get this toolbar. And what I have done is I've said, okay, take your stamp tool and place it on the spectrum according to whether you strongly agree or strongly disagree. So boop, I strongly disagree or oh, I strongly agree. And when people are doing that, you can see like as a facilitator, not positive if they, if they can see it, but you can see their names really briefly as they click, right? So what I'll do is I'll draw on my, like on a notebook that I've got next to me, I'll draw the spectrum and I'll note as people are writing down, I'll be like, okay, Sam, Dennis, um, <clears throat> Jose, like down here, I strongly disagree. And then I'll write, okay, Jason, Claire, like up here, I strongly agree. And I'll be able to then call back to people. It's a little hackier than what we showed on Mural um, with our with our like beautiful one with the people's you know images and all that kind of stuff. Like that's definitely hackier um, than that, but it does work. And so that's a really cool thing to be able to do in Zoom is just this idea of like strongly agree, strongly disagree. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can use this whiteboard. So one thing that's cool is you can then clear um, you can clear all the viewers' drawings. So you can, did it work? Hmm, let's clear all drawings. Okay, um, I don't know why I wasn't, I wasn't uh, clearing just the, oh, cause I'm, I was like, why isn't it clearing the viewer? I'm the viewer. So it wasn't gonna clear any of their, any of, it would have cleared their drawings if you had a bunch of participants um, while leaving yours. So that's cool. Um, so there's like, there's spectrum questions, you know, there's like four quadrant activities. Um, you can have people doodle uh, and like type things. You can do kind of like, you could do a, a really simple sticky note generator on here if you were just like trying to get a bunch of ideas. Um, and then there's also the ability to like share something that people can draw on. Um, so you could set up that spectrum, um, ahead of time on a slide and you could actually share that and use that same annotation feature. So something that I've seen people do before is do, um, some like coloring with their groups. So if you get like, um, like if you just pull up a coloring page, I'm going to do it right now. Let's see if we can find one without it being watermarked. Probably not. Okay, so not at this short notice. So let's see, I'll still show you what it will look like anyway though. So if you go to screen share, do, do, do. if you go to screen share, um, okay, go to screen share, use advanced and then portion of the screen. That will let you screen share any specific like little part of the screen. So if you were all participants in my Zoom right now, all that you would see is what's in the yellow, in the orange box to doodle on. Um, and then again, if you have them annotate, um, then you can encourage people to draw and be like, okay, we have a couple minutes, go ahead and fill in the drawing, we're gonna do like a group doodle. And like, this is just like kind of a really random novel way to use Zoom. And again, they don't see all of this stuff around the image. All they would see is just what's in the middle here. Um, and so I'm sure that you, like one way I've used it is, um, <clears throat> I've had everybody dr like color in where they're calling in from uh, or color in like where, a place that they would like to go. So. Those are just like, you know, they're random. They're like little ways to really change up the interaction. Um, so that's another like thing that people just never think to do on Zoom that I think could be really powerful um, without ever having to like leave the platform or have people use um, a different technology. So it'll feel really different um, because they haven't probably used Zoom like that before, but it's interesting. <sighs> okay. 